So let's make a really, really boring game. Uh, the game is going to be silly. We're just going to have two sprites that choose a number from 1 to 100, uh, and then a third sprite that determines which one of them chose the higher number. Obviously, if this was humans, it would be incredibly stupid, uh, but with two computers, they're both going to pick random numbers, and we're not going to give them any intelligence. It'll just be random. Uh, and the reason that we're going to do this is to demonstrate how... Uh, the order in which you do things can really affect a program. Sometimes your logic can be right, but things can still be messed up. So that's what this is going to demonstrate. So let's start by just getting rid of the cat, and we'll choose a couple of sprites to, to use. Let's say that one of them is uh, the dinosaur, and we'll use another one. Let's just pick another sprite at random here. Uh, let's go with the reindeer. All right, so we're going to have the dinosaur and the reindeer both pick a random number. So to do that, we're just going to go to events and say, when you click the flag, what I'd like to have happen is I'm going to go to data. And since I want to be able to compare these two numbers that they choose, I need to store the number that they're about to pick in something. And that something is going to be a variable. So let's make one called dinosaur number. And let's make another variable called uh, reindeer number. OK. So when we click the flag, I want to set the reindeer's number to just be a random number from 1 to 100. And if we go to the operators tab, we can drag in the pick random number block like that and just change this to 100. So now we should be able to just have a random number chosen when we click the flag. I'm just going to bring the reindeer's number over here, dinosaur's number there, and sure enough our reindeer is picking a random number. So that's great. And perhaps more importantly we're saving it in a variable uh, so that we can compare it later. Now let's just drag this across to the dinosaur. And now my dinosaur, I'm just going to change this to change or to set the dinosaur number instead of the rain uh, deer number. And if we click on the flag again, excellent. Now they're both choosing a number. Now I can see which one these are associated with. So let's change the display of this. I'm just going to right click on that and go to the large readout. So we can see what the dinosaur is choosing and go to large readout. And we can see what the reindeer is choosing as well. So there we are. So now we're clicking on the flag. Now it's very easy for us to look at that and see which character has won our very, very simplistic game. Uh, but let's see if we can improve on it by adding a third character who is the judge that determines which one won. So let's say that it's going to be the duck. And so our duck is going to choose which character won the game. So to do that, let's go back to events. Say when we click the flag, really what we need to do is ask the computer a question. We need to say which one of these numbers is bigger. And anytime we ask the computer a question, we use an if block. Uh, and so in this situation, I'm going to use an if else block actually. And the reason for that is that there's two options. We could either have the dinosaur win or we could have the reindeer win. So let's go ahead and try it. And heads up, I'm making a couple of uh, errors on purpose that we'll fix in a moment. Now, when we do this, we could ask the question like, for example, and I'm dragging in the greater than block. So we could say if the dinosaur's number is greater than the reindeer's number, then let's go to looks and we'll just say dino wins like that. And otherwise, we're going to say reindeer wins. Now, there's a few things that are going to go wrong here. So let's check it out. So when we click the flag, we get reindeer wins on this one. Uh oh, so immediately we see a problem. So the reindeer chose 31, the dinosaur chose 49, and yet somehow the reindeer was our winner. So that doesn't make any sense. Let's check another one. Uh oh, and the dinosaur won, but he only had 84 and the reindeer had 96. So something is going horribly wrong right off the bat here. So as we look at this, the issue, once we explore it for a while, is to realize that when we click the flag, this and this and this event are all happening. 
But unfortunately, we don't know what order they're occurring in. They can't actually happen at the same time because your computer is not going to run them all simultaneously. But it's almost indistinguishable for us to know which one is happening when. So what we need to do is order these. And the way to do that is to hook this up. Instead of having them all when the flag is clicked, we'll have one event occur when the flag is clicked and then use broadcasts to control when the other things are happening. So let's go to the events. And after the dinosaur picks his number, we're going to make a new message and say reindeer picks. Now for the reindeer, instead of having it when the flag is clicked, we want that to be when I receive reindeer picks. And then finally, we need to broadcast that the winner should be chosen. So let's go to a new message here and say choose winner. And the duck should respond to when I receive choose winner. All right, so let's try it now. So if I click the flag, okay, now we have it correct. The dinosaur did win that time, and the reindeer did win that time. So this is looking good. Now there still is one little mistake that we've made here. Uh, and the problem is, what happens if it's a tie? And just to make it clear, let me actually set it up so that it is a tie. I'll make them both choose 50 for a second here just to demonstrate. So if they both choose 50 and you look at this code, it shouldn't be a surprise that what's about to happen is not correct. Right now, they both choose 50 and yet we say that the reindeer wins. The reason for that is that all we did is we tested here to see is the dinosaur greater than the reindeer. If it was, we said the dinosaur won. Otherwise, we said the reindeer won. Uh, but that otherwise includes the possibility of a tie, which is not what we want. So we need to go back in here and fix this up. So I'm going to add another if-else block, and I'll put all of this inside the else. Now the if that I need to test for, the thing that we haven't looked for, is to see is it a tie. So let's go to the operators and drag in the equals. And at this point we could ask, is the dinosaur number equal to the reindeer number. If it is, then let's just say it's a tie. And we can test it out again. And they're both 50 and it is a tie, so that's great. Let's hook it back up to be random. And now, great. So everything should be working. I think we've hit all of the different problems that we might have encountered now. So now that we've got that all sorted, let's see if we can make another game that is a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go to File, New, and we'll just call this one a dodging game. And what we'd like to have happen is we just want a ball that bounces around the screen constantly uh, and a character that's trying to avoid that. So I'm going to delete the cat. We don't need him right off the bat here. So let's start by making a ball that bounces around the screen. So we're just going to import a ball. I'll go with the basketball. And let's begin by saying when you click the flag is when we're going to begin this. Actually, let's make it when the space key is pressed. Uh, we'll begin with the space key and then what we want to have happen is we want this ball to move around from here on out. So that means since it's going to happen forever, we need the forever block. And what we want to have happen is that we want it to simply move. And if it's on the edge, we want it to bounce. So if on edge, bounce. So if I press the space key, it's going to be the most boring situation possible here, just going left and right. So the reason that's happening is that I haven't bothered to turn it in any particular direction or point it towards something. So let's go with this point in direction. Notice I put that outside the forever block, so it only happened once right off the bat. And we could choose a value like, say, 0 to be up, in which case it would be boring in a different direction. So let's use that random situation that we used before. Let's just say pick a number from 1 to 360. So now we'll have a random direction every time that I press the space key, and it will just continue to move. So that's good. But let's try to improve the game a little bit. Let's make it so that this ball starts slow and then speeds up. So if we want it to start slow and slowly begin to, to gain speed, we need to keep track of the speed of the ball in, some, in something. Anytime we want to keep track of stuff, we're going to use variables. So let's make ourselves another variable. I'll call it ball speed. And 
So at the beginning, we want to set the ball speed to some value, and we can pick whatever we want. Let's say we start with five uh, to be pretty slow. And then we want to move by that ball speed. So if we do that, we press the space bar. Now the ball is just going to be moving at a constant speed of five, which is fine to begin with, but let's improve this again. So I would like to make it so that every time that it touches the edge, that it speeds up. So I'm going to go to an if block because I'm asking a question and I'm just going to ask if and underneath sensing, I can ask, are you touching the edge? And so that should trigger every time that we get to the edge. And what I'd like to do is simply speed up the ball. So in other words, I'm going to change the ball speed by one. And you can see that now what's happening is every time it touches the edge, the ball is speeding up. So it's starting to move faster and faster. Now there is going to be a problem here. And that is that over time, this ball is going to get ridiculously fast to the point where things are going to go very wrong. Specifically, it's going to move so fast that we're going to go from one end of the screen to the other without it actually showing up in between. So it's just going to look goofy like it's starting to look now. It's beginning to be way too large because it's just jumping from one location outside the screen, turning a different direction, jumping outside the screen in another side. So it's just looking really goofy. So what we need to do is set some kind of logical maximum. What is the highest value that we want for the speed of this ball? So let's say that we only want to change this ball speed if it's less than say 50 or something. Well, anytime I'm going to ask that question, once again, we just need an if statement. So before I change the ball speed, I'm going to ask, is the ball speed less than something? So is the ball speed less than say 50? And if it is, let's change it by one. So I'm going to start over, press the flag, and now our ball should be bouncing. And once it hits 50, well, that should be the maximum. It shouldn't get any faster than that. So that's great. So we have a ball that's bouncing around and we'll just let that continue on as we're going along here. And what I'm going to do is I need to now start making a, uh, a character, some kind of sprite that's going to avoid that ball. So let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's, let's say we pick any one of these. I'd like to use, <laughs> sure, a watermelon. That looks good. Let's try to avoid it with a watermelon. Uh, and what we're going to do, and great, so by the way, the ball speed is stuck at 50. It's not gonna go, going to go any faster than that. Uh, so now we need to hook this watermelon up so that as we move, that the watermelon follows us. Uh, so we're going to move our mouse and have the wa watermelon come after us. So we're going to say, when you click that space key, right, same thing that was triggering here, what we want to have happen is for this watermelon to constantly be following my mouse. So we're going to say, forever, I want to point in the direction of the mouse, so point towards the mouse, and then move some amount. Now if we did this and we press the space key, now the watermelon is coming after us like that, and that's working fine, and we can try to avoid this ball. There is, however, uh, a little bit of a problem. Right now we're moving 10 steps, which at the start seemed like it was really fast, and then once we get to this point where the ball's moving faster, now it's getting harder and harder because this watermelon isn't moving that quick. One other problem is once the watermelon gets really close, it starts to jitter really badly because it's moving too far. So let's try to fix both of those problems. The first one, trying to make sure that we fix this jittery motion. Uh, and the second, just making sure that the ball or that the watermelon doesn't just move at a constant speed. So if we want to make it move at a at a different speed, we're going to make another variable here, and I'll call it call it watermelon speed. And when I do that, uh, we're just going to set the speed at the beginning to be say I don't know uh, two. And then I'm going to constantly be moving at the watermelon speed. So if we try that, we click the space key, it's moving really slow. But unfortunately, as the ball speeds up, currently the watermelon is not speeding up. So what I'd like to have happen is I'd like it to be tied to the ball speed. I'd like it to increase at the same rate as the ball. So to do that, I'll go back to the basketball and I'll just say, hey, you know, when you change the ball speed, I also want to change the watermelon speed. In which case, when we press the flag, 
the watermelon's moving slower than the ball because we can anticipate where the ball's going. But as things move along, the watermelon's going faster and faster, just like the ball is, so that we can try to avoid it, okay? But it does have this jittery motion. So let's fix the jittery motion. So we wanna move watermelon speed steps, but if we're so close to the mouse, it's going past the mouse and then turn around and jumping back. So we need to ask the computer a question. We need to say, I only wanna do this. I only wanna move if it's not so close to the mouse that it's gonna get jittery. So let's ask a question. Let's say if, and I'm using a less than here because what I'd like to do is ask if the distance to that mouse pointer and actually I should have said greater than, let's switch that around. I'm gonna say if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than my watermelon speed, then let's move. And that way, if it's close enough, we just won't bother moving at all. So when we do this, now when we let the cursor just sit in one spot, the watermelon should just stop. Great. Now our last situation that we need to take care of is knowing that the actual game is done, that the watermelon's been hit by the ball. So let's finish this off by simply asking that question. So we can uh, do this inside our uh, watermelon or inside the basketball. For this time, I'll just do it in the watermelon and I'll just ask if this watermelon is touching the basketball. Now, We'll just go there. So if the watermelon is touching the basketball, then what we want to have happen is the game to just end. So for the w game to end, let's just go to control and I'll just say stop all. Of course, we can make it look much nicer than this, but for now, what this is going to do is just stop every sprite. All the scripts and all the sprites should just end. So let's give it a run. Oh, let's start in a new location. There we go. It's moving along and it ends. So great, we're good to go. Now, the one problem I notice is when I press the space key, nothing's gonna happen because they're both in the same location. So maybe what we wanna do is we just wanna say, at the beginning, when you press the space key, let's have them start in different locations. So I'll have the watermelon start here and the basketball start there. So I'll just say, go to this location and go to that location, in which case they start in opposite sides so that we can be guaranteed that they're going to be in different places. Yeah, there we go. And that should do it.